Brothers and sisters, I'd like to ask one very important question. What quality defines us best as members of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints? Today I'd like to spend about uh, to speak about the answer to this question. In the first century AD, members of the growing church at Corinth were enthusiastic about the gospel. Almost all were recent converts to the church. Many were attracted to it through preaching of the gospel by the Apostle Paul and others. But the saints in Corinth were also contentious. They argued amongst themselves. Some felt superior to others. They took each, other, took each other to court. When Paul heard of this, he a, a feeling, a sense of frustration. He wrote them a letter pleading with them to become more unified. He answered many of the questions they had been arguing about. Then towards the end, he told them that he wanted them to show a more excellent way. Do you remember the words he wrote next? Though I speak with the tongue of angels, of men and angels, and have not clarity, he told them, I become a sounding brass or tinking cymbal. Paul's message to this new body of saints was simple and direct. Nothing you do make, makes much difference if you do not have charity. You can speak with tongues, have the gift of prophecy, understand the mysteries, and possess all knowledge, even if you have the faith to move mountains. Without charity, it won't profit you at all. Charity is the pure love of Christ. The Savior exemplified that love and taught it even as was tormented by those who despised and hated him. On one occasion, the Pharisees tried to trap Jesus by asking him a simply, a seemingly impossible question. Master, they asked, which is the greatest commandment of the law? The Pharisees had debated this question extensively and had identified more than 600 commandments. If prioritizing them was such a difficult task to scholars, certainly they thought the question would be impossible for this son of, car of a carpenter from Beck Galilee. When the Pharisees heard this answer, they must have been troubled, for it pointed to their great weakness. He replied, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. This is the great first and great commandment. And the second is like unto it, Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Since that day, this inspired pronouncement has been repeated through many generations. Now for us, the measure of our love is the measure of the greatness of our souls. The scriptures tell us that if any man love God, the same is known of him. What a wonderful promise to be known of him. It makes the spirit soar to think that the creator of heaven and earth could know us and love us with pure eternal love. In 1840, the prophet Joseph sent an epistle to the Twelve, wherein he taught that love is one of the chief char characteristics of deity and ought to be maintained by those who aspire to be the sons of God. A man filled with the love of God is not content with blessing a family alone, but targets through the whole world, anxious to bless the whole human race. As we reach out to love to those around us, we fulfill other half, the other half of the great commandment to love, her, to love thy neighbor as thyself. Both commandments are necessary, for as we bear one another's burdens, we fulfill the law of Christ. Love is the beginning, the middle, and the end of the pathway of discipleship. It comforts, counsels, cures, and consoles. It leads us through valleys of darkness and through the veil of death. In the end, love leads us to glory and grandeur of eternal life. For me, the prophet Joseph has always exemplified the pure love of Christ. Many asked why he gained so many followers and retained them. His answer is because I possess the principle of love. The story is told of a 14-year-old boy who had come to Nauvoo to search of his brother who lived near there. The young boy had arrived in the winter with no money and no friends. When he inquired about his brother, the boy was taken to a large house that looked like a hotel. There he met a man who said, Come in, son, we'll take care of you. 
the boy accepted and was brought into the house where he was fed, warmed, and was given a bed to sleep in. The next day it was bitter cold, but in spite of that, the boy prepared himself to walk eight miles to where his brother was staying. When the man of the house saw, saw this, he told the young boy to stay for a while. He said there would be a team coming soon and that he could ride back with them. When, when the boy protested, saying he had no money, the man told him not to worry about that, that they would take care of him. Later, the boy learned that the man of the house was none other than Joseph Smith, the Mormon prophet. This boy remembered this act of charity for the rest of his life. In a recent message to the Mormon Tabernacle Choir's music and the spoken word, a story was told of an elderly man and woman who had been married for many decades. Because the wife was slowly losing her sight, she could no longer take care of herself the way she had done for so many years. Without being asked, the husband began to paint her fingernails for her. He knew that she could see her fingernails when she held them close to her eyes. At just the right angle, and they made her smile, he liked to see her happy, so he kept painting her nails for more than five years before she passed away. As an example of pure love of Christ, sometimes the greatest love is not found in the dramatic scenes that poets and writers immortalize. Often the greatest manifestations of love are the simple acts of kindness and caring we extend to those we meet along the path of life. True love lasts forever, is eternally patient and forgiving. It believes, hopes, and endures all things. That is, is the love of our Heavenly Father bears for us. We all yearn to experience love like this. Even when we make mistakes, we hope others will love us in spite of our shortcomings, even if we don't deserve it. Oh, it is wonderful to know that our Heavenly Father loves us, even with all our flaws. His love is such that even should we give up ourselves, He never will. We see ourselves in terms of yesterday and today. Our Heavenly Father sees us in terms of forever. Although we might settle for less, Heavenly Father won't, for He sees us as the glorious, glorious beings we are capable of becoming. The gospel of Jesus Christ is a gospel of transformation. It takes us as men and women of the earth and refines us into men and women for eternities. This means of oh, this refinement is our Christ-like love. There is no pain it can, cannot soften, no bitterness it cannot remove, no hatred it cannot alter. The Greek playwright Sophocles wrote one read word Treats us of all weight and pain. And that word is love. The most cherished, sacred moments of our lives are those filled with the spirit of love. No measure of our love is the greater is our joy. In the end, the development of such love is the true measure of success of life. Do you love the Lord? Spend time with Him. Meditate His words. Take His yoke upon you. Seek to understand and obey, because this is the love of God that we keep His commandments. When we love the Lord, obedience ceases to be a burden. Obedience becomes a delight. When we love the Lord, we seek less for things that benefit us and turn our hearts towards things that will bless and uplift others. Our love is the Lord, for the Lord deepens our minds and hearts become pure. We experience a mighty change in our hearts that we have no more disposition to do evil, but to do good continually. Brothers and sisters, as you prayerfully consider what you can do to increase harmony spiritually and build up the kingdom of God, consider your sacred duty to teach others to love the Lord and their fellow man. This is the general object of our existence. Without charity of the love of Christ, Whatever else we accomplish matters less. With it, all else becomes vibrant and alive. When we inspire and teach others to fulfill with love, obedience flows from the inside in voluntary acts of self-sacrifice and service. Yes, those who go teaching out of duty 
for example, may fulfill our obligation with those who home teach out of genuine love for the Lord and for their fellow men will likely approach that task with a very different attitude. Returning to my original question, what quality defends us best as members of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints? I would answer, we are a people who love the Lord with all our hearts, souls, and minds, and we love our neighbors as ourselves. That is our signature as a people, is a beacon to the world, sign signaling whose disciples we are. At the final day, the Savior will not, not ask the nature of our callings. He will not inquire about our material blessings or fame. He will ask if we minister to the sick, gave food and drink to the hungry, visited those in prison, or gave succor to the weak. When we reach out to assist the least of our Heavenly Father's children, we do it under Him. That is the essence of the gospel of Jesus Christ. If we wish to learn how to love, all we need to do is reflect on our life of our Savior. When we partake of the sacramental emblems, we're reminded of the greatest example of love in all the world's history. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son. The Savior's love for us was so great that it caused even God, the greatest of all, to tremble because of pain and the blessed every poor. Because the Savior laid down his life for us, he gave us brightness of hope, confidence, and security when we pass from this worldly existence. We will live again with him. Through the atonement of Jesus Christ, we can be cleansed of sin and stand as partakers of the gift of the Almighty Father. Then we'll know the glory that God hath prepared for them that love him. This is the transforming power of, char of charity. When Jesus gave us his, his disciples the new commandment, love one another as I have loved you, he gave them the grand key of happiness to this glory in the next world. Love is the greatest of all the commandments. All of the others hang upon it. As our focus as followers of a loving Christ it is one trait that if de developed will most improve our lives. I bear testimony that God lives, his love, is, his love is infinite and eternal, extends to all of his children. Because he loves us, he's provided prophets and apostles to guide us. He has given us the Holy Ghost that teaches, comforts, and inspires. He's given us scriptures, and I'm grateful beyond description that he's given to each of us a heart capable of experiencing the pure love of Christ. I pray that our hearts may be filled with that love that we may reach out to our Heavenly Father and to others with a new vision of faith. I testify that as we so do, we will discover greater richness in life in the second sa sacred name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you.